It was a rare thing to have people you could trust in the wastelands of Olathe, where warlords ruthlessly dominated sections of the land, shady salesmen offered suspicious stock, and thugs kidnapped sleeping citizens for ransom. But in this barbaric land, there were four men who were lucky enough to have each other's friendship. There was Cheeks Gaywood, whose name aptly reflected his flush-faced appearance. Brad Armstrong, a quiet, reserved, tough guy that struggled with the traumas of his past. Tony Sticky Anganelli, a phallic-headed man that had a similarly abusive past. And Richard Weeks, a friendly, level-headed man with a fondness for the bottle. Through the strength of their lifelong brotherhood, they dedicated to spending the rest of their days helping each other live out the rest of their lives until the doom of mankind came to claim them all. That is, until a seemingly chance discovery by Brad in the deserts of Olathe changed everything. This finding created a small crack in the foundation of friendship between the men, which grew and grew, eventually leading to the crumbling of the bond that had stood for so long between them. The beginnings of their friendship actually stretch all the way back to their childhood, where the four played amongst each other in the woods and playgrounds of their neighborhood. Nothing showed how deep their bond was more than the moment Brad took a beating from the neighborhood bully, Christopher Colombo, so that Rick didn't have to. As the years went on, the boys maintained their relationship, sharing many happy moments together, like when Rick married and bought a house, or when Brad opened his martial arts studio. But life wasn't always happy, and the men bonded over their hardships as well, an example being the nearly constant bullying of Christopher Colombo. Brad and Sticky especially clicked, due to a sad similarity shared between them. They both had abusive fathers and grew up in broken homes. They found comfort in their shared pain since the other knew what it was like to be beaten down and broken. The pair turned to drugs to numb the trauma away, and it was common to see them used together. While Sticky always managed to keep his chin up despite his circumstances, Brad had a much tougher time doing so due to further hardships in his life. While he managed to get out of his father's abusive home, his little sister Lisa wasn't as lucky. Feeling trapped with nowhere to go, she found only one way out of her circumstances. She hanged herself to finally escape the torment she experienced from her father. Brad was greatly distressed at this news and felt incredibly guilty at his little sister's suicide, feeling he could have done more to prevent it, to save her. He spiraled into a depression and turned to his familiar vice to numb away the hurt in his heart. Rick, seeing the hurt in his friend, tried to cheer him up by inviting him over to his house for dinner, which made for an awkward night, as Brad saw a wife that was uninterested in Rick, a son of questionable origin, and a seemingly oblivious Rick. After dinner, the two made their way to the backyard where Rick tried to keep up his facade, but soon gave in to his gloom. Brad inquired about Rick's turn of mood, and he lamented about the trappings he'd found himself in in his own life. He revealed he was envious of Brad's life, of the freedom of having no kids or wife, of him teaching martial arts. He exclaimed that Brad's life was awesome, which triggered something in Brad who saw his sister appear next to him and tell Rick he shouldn't forget about her. This set Brad off, and he quickly left Rick's home. It was Sticky that next saw their friend, who sharply asked him for drugs. Sensing something was wrong with him, Sticky asked him to tell him what was up, but Brad wouldn't. Sticky pressed him more, and Brad started getting angry, but concerned with his friend, Sticky told him that drugs were the last thing he needed right now, and held out, causing Brad to leave in a huff. Brad's reluctance to confide in his friends could have been the beginning of the end of their friendship, but that was when a shining white light burned over the land, and changed everything. The effects of this incident were wide-reaching and disastrous. The luscious landscape that covered Olathe withered and died, leaving it a desert. All of the women that lived in Olathe seemingly disappeared, and society as a whole devolved into anarchy, eventually crumbling. With no women to continue the human race, grief struck the surviving men of the land, and with no law governing the land, most of these men became aggressively ruthless. Sections of the land were fought over, which eventually fell under the domain of warlords that were able to exert their influence over them, often at the expense of the innocent and weak. 
transforming Olathe into a brutal war zone free of consequence and conscience. Despite the savagery of the setting and the cataclysm of the Flash, all four of Brad, Rick, Sticky, and Cheeks were alive. Soon after the outset of the disaster that swept over Olathe, they made a commitment to each other, to their brotherhood, that they were going to survive through these perilous days until the dying days of their species, something that was now an inevitability. One day, as Rick, Sticky, and Cheeks were lazily lounging in the heat and sunshine, they watched as Brad approached holding something in small wrappings. And even though they knew what it was, they couldn't believe it. As Brad stood clutching the small thing close to his breast, Rick asked him what he held. But Cheeks' surprise couldn't be contained, and he screamed aloud the question that all three of them had in their head. Brad confessed he held a baby in his arms, and when asked, says he just found it on the ground, like it was something someone unsympathetically tossed aside. A sudden realization hit Cheeks. Someone must have given birth to this baby, which meant a girl was out there somewhere in a lathe, and that there was hope for humanity. He lustily commented about her appearance, which Sticky agreed upon, which prompted Rick to shut down their conversation so they could deal with the matter in front of them. Looking at the ground, Rick asked Brad if the baby was a boy or a girl. Brad answered that he hadn't checked. As his friends stared intently at him, Brad uncovered the baby's wrappings and announced his findings to his friends. The baby was a girl, hitting them all with surprise. Rick was the first to digest the news. Understanding the importance of what they had in front of them, he said they needed to tell someone, which led to Cheeks concluding the Warlord Rando would be the best person to tell, as he would set them up for life if they came to him with this. Rick agreed, commenting he and his army would be much better equipped to deal with something this important. But Brad had his own ideas for the baby he held in his arms. Understanding the cruelty of present-day Olathe, a place where sex-starved men roamed with no qualms of taking advantage of others, he feared that when the baby grew into a woman, she wouldn't stand a chance, so decided that he was keeping her. Rick, realizing how ridiculous that was, tried talking him out of that, questioning if he thought about what would happen if someone found out about her, to which Brad replied that no one could know that he had her. Rick questioned him again, but Brad was resolute, saying he didn't care if they helped or not, and saying this was his second chance. Rick, understanding that Brad was referring to his sister, whom he felt he failed, was driven silent by this. He listened as Brad promised his little buddy that he wouldn't let anyone hurt her, then gazed upon his friend. With Brad's stubbornness winning out, he adopted the girl, becoming her father, while Rick, Sticky, and Cheeks became her uncles. A room was carved out below their hut, meant to be Buddy's room, where the four of them raised the young girl through the years, spending happy moments together. As Buddy grew, she became more inquisitive of the world outside the walls of the hut, but she was never allowed to explore it due to Brad's intense paranoia surrounding her. A paranoia driven not only by his worry of her discovery, but by his continued drug abuse. Seeing how miserable the girl was driven, her uncles attempted to comfort her, telling her stories of their past, which often pushed Sticky to tears. She was especially entranced by a story they told her of a boy named Dusty, whom they say was Brad's son. When she brought it up to her father, he wasn't happy that her uncles told her of Dusty, and as punishment, told her she was to stay away from her uncles, isolating her even further. Seeing the misery Brad had brought Buddy, Rick and Sticky concluded he was unfit to be a parent, and resentment grew within them. This feeling was compounded by their friend's insistence of keeping Buddy to himself instead of sharing her with the rest of the world, prioritizing his own selfish desire over the needs of the entirety of mankind. They believed Buddy was the key to repopulation, to the survival of the human race, but since she was trapped under the care of a man that didn't have the strength to let her go because he couldn't get over the guilt of his past, it seemed the world would die. To give the world a chance to live, to get an opportunity to save the world, Rick and Sticky determined they needed to find some way to get her out from under Brad's control. 
that opportunity did come, just not in an ideal way. One day, while Brad was out on a drug binge, men came around investigating the disappearance of one of their companions. They stumbled across the small hut Buddy called home and found her, the last girl alive, the possible salvation for humanity, and an outlet for their suppressed sexual urges in the basement of the hut. They attempted to abduct her, yet were stopped by her fierce resistance and the appearance of her uncles who fought bravely to protect her. Seeing this as their chance, her uncles started to flee with her, but not all of them managed to get away. Cheeks was gravely hurt in the fighting and had to be left behind. As his life withered away, Brad arrived and Cheeks managed to inform him of the dire news, then died in the hands of his friend. After mourning his friend's death for a moment, Brad gave chase and found that news of Buddy's discovery swept over seemingly the entire land. Rick, Sticky, and Buddy were trying to get away as fast as they could from a mob of men that was close on their tail. They crossed a rope bridge and to thwart further pursuit, cut it out behind them, leaving a chasm between them and their pursuers, giving them a moment of peace. But it would only be a moment as nearly everybody was looking for any trace of the girl. Luckily, one of the three of them thought to grab a mask made by Brad to conceal Buddy's identity and put this on her to buy them some time, but the disguise wouldn't last long. Rick and Sticky deliberated and finally decided it would be best to get Buddy to Rando, the idea that they had so many years ago. There was a cave not far from where they were that they could hide Buddy until Rando's men could come and get them and protect them on the way to Rando land, so they began their trek eastwards towards the cave but were forced to fight again when other men saw through Buddy's disguise. They were able to fight off their attackers and begin to flee, but this time Rick sustained injuries that forced him to be left behind, while Sticky raced to get Buddy to the cave as quick as possible. As Rick sat there clutching his wound, trying to gain his strength back, someone called his name as they approached him from behind. Rick turned, and in wide-eyed dismay, saw Brad the man they were attempting to steal Buddy from, standing there questioning him as to the whereabouts of his daughter. Rick ran from Brad, who chased after him in confusion. When he caught up to him, Rick turned and punched him, knocking him from his feet. Brad got up and again gave chase, tackling Rick to the ground and tying him up to a nearby pole. He demanded an explanation from Rick and the location of his daughter. Rick scoffed in contempt, then informed Brad that she was gone. Rick revealed the plan that he believed would save the world. Buddy was going to be used for repopulation. Brad thought that plan was idiotic since he believed it would lead to Buddy getting taken advantage of, but when Rick shouted back asking if they should just die off, Brad couldn't answer him. The realization of the betrayal still fresh in his head, he tried to understand why Rick would take his girl away from him which caused all the suppressed emotion that simmered within Rick to boil over, and he screamed at Brad, revealing all the contempt that had grown inside him over the years. He screamed about how there are more important things affecting everybody in the world. He screamed about how selfish Brad was being by being willing to doom them all so he didn't need to feel guilty anymore. He screamed about how Brad's struggles with drug addiction make him a washed up druggie and he screamed how unfit he was to be a parent, especially to the most important child in the world. Brad, his mind on one thing, turned back to Rick and asked him where his daughter was, warning that he didn't want to hurt him, but Rick invited Brad to do his worst. Brad punched Rick in the face, drawing blood from his mouth, but Rick didn't reveal anything. Brad struck again and again, but still Rick persevered and even began taunting Brad. Getting nowhere with this, Brad picked up a spiked club on the ground close by and threatened that Rick had one last opportunity to divulge information, but he still refused to give up anything. Brad walked over to his childhood friend and bashed him in the face with the club, brutally tearing it up. Rick finally relented, but Brad didn't stop. Rick told him of the cave that Sticky had taken her to where they were waiting for Rando's men, but he was interrupted by more punishment. Blood 
pouring down his face, the pain nearly unbearable. He begged Brad to stop, that he was killing him, but Brad kept going, and going, and going. Meanwhile, Sticky and Buddy were still being chased, but reached the cave mentioned earlier, and as they slipped into it, an explosion rocked the mountain, causing a landslide which resulted in rocks blocking the cave entrance, saving them from further pursuit. They climbed to the highest chamber of the cave system, where Sticky ordered Buddy to stay while he went to get reinforcements from Rando, who was seen in the nearby area. Sticky was able to meet the warlord and managed to get him to agree to help while Rando set off back towards Randoland in the Far East to prepare for Buddy's arrival, he gave Sticky some men to protect them on their trek towards his home. With Rando's protection assured, Sticky returned to the mountaintop chamber to retrieve Buddy, but found that men in pink masks had her in their clutches, and it looked like their leader was interrogating someone, a balding, bearded man. Sticky recognized the figure as Brad, who had come through the mountains to collect Buddy himself. Not wanting her to fall into either one of these men's hands, Sticky launched an attack on the masked men, attempting to save Buddy from them. Men from both sides fell in the fighting, but eventually Sticky and the Rando soldiers were unable to pry Buddy from the grasp of the masked men, and Sticky himself was grievously wounded by the leader. But the man left him alive, choosing to spare him for some reason. As Sticky lied there in a puddle of his own blood, he heard the steps of someone approaching, and as he looked up, he saw the face of Brad staring down at him. Seeing him nearly on death's door, Brad looked at Tony, his former friend, and told him it was all over. Hearing his birth name reminded Sticky of his father, which put him on a path of recollection of his and Brad's shared past, of how similar they used to be abused kids with only one friend that understood what the other was going through. But Sticky also remembered the key difference between them, that he never gave in to his despair, while Brad fell deeper into his. Sticky asked what happened to forsake everything they stood for, to the vow they made to survive, to their brotherhood, and Brad told him that none of that mattered to him anymore. Now, it was only Buddy, his second chance. Sticky scoffed at that notion, and told Brad Buddy wasn't his daughter or some chance of redemption for him. She was a gift to the world, an opportunity to save it, and he wasn't strong enough to let go of his guilt, to let go of Buddy, and let her into the world to give it and everyone in it a chance to be saved. But he assured Brad that now the world would be safe, because Sticky made that decision for him. Brad charged up a fireball, but as he did so, someone came running in and threw himself between Brad and Sticky. It was Rick, who, although mutilated, survived the beating Brad laid upon him, and he now begged Brad to spare Sticky's life. If Brad were feeling merciless at that moment, then he would unleash his fireball, ending the lives of his former friends, their corpses a symbol of the end of the bond they'd all shared since childhood. However, the significance of that bond still held some sway within Brad, and with his teeth bared, he ordered his former friends to leave and never show their faces again. Rick thanked Brad for the mercy shown him, and he pulled Sticky to come with him. But for Sticky, Brad's threat seemingly fell on deaf ears as he warned Brad that things weren't over between them. Sure enough, after leaving, Sticky regathered his strength and set out to stop Brad before he could ruin everything. As Brad headed to a nearby shoreline with materials he was going to use to build a boat to sail after his daughter, Sticky stood in his path. Brad ordered him to stand aside, but Sticky refused. Believing Brad was going to destroy the world, Sticky apologized to his former friend, then started a fight to end Brad's journey. However, Brad's strength was too much for him, and despite begging his one-time brother not to do this, he was killed by Brad, ending the brotherhood that was meant to stand the test of time and survive all the way until the end. Cheeks, Brad, Sticky, and Rick. These four men shared a powerful bond that had withstood so much tragedy and heartache grief and unhappiness, and even the end of society. 
They were dedicated to see their lives through to the end of everything. But they had no idea that it wouldn't be the extinction of the human race that would lead them to their demise. Instead, the discovery of the last girl alive led to a rift emerging between them, putting them at odds with each other and ultimately breaking the bonds of friendship that tied them together. Without their brotherhood, the men merely saw each other as obstacles in the way of their own desires. Obstacles that needed to be overcome by any means necessary, resulting in the deaths of all of them. And that's the story of Rick, Sticky, and Cheeks. I know this one's kind of weird since it focused mainly on the friendship between all four of them, and by all means, I don't think these characters are defined by that friendship, but it was hard to tell their story outside of that friendship since that's the only way we get to see these characters. I also left out Rick's appearance in Lisa the Pointless. If you're wondering why, it's because I only wanted to include information from the main games in this video. And yes, that's despite the creator of Lisa saying the fan games are canon. I hope those things didn't take too much away from the video and it was still enjoyable nonetheless. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to ask and I'll do my best to answer them. But that's it, so thank you for watching and see you later.